Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining this podcast. For those who do not know me, my name is Arkham Chima, your very own sales guy and the co-founder of Captains. And today we have a really special guest on board, who is the CEO of Datapril. So let's just invite Danny McMillan on the stage. Hello, Danny. Hi. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for joining this podcast. So let me just clarify today's topic, which is all about how you can launch, grow, and scale a newly concept product. Like I'm a big fan of Shark Tank, and you might might have also seen a lot of Shark Tank episodes. And maybe I have the, like a habit of whenever I see a product on Shark Tank, I just go to Amazon, search for it, and look out how they're performing. And most of the time, I'm just disappointed because they are spending a lot of money on everything. and the products are not performing well on Amazon. So yeah. today we are going to discuss this and how we can like launch for myself a newly concept product and make it successful. Okay. Yep, that's over to good. you. Yeah, so thank you for having me. I think the the most common problem like you said about your disappointment with it. Mm-hmm. Um mm-hmm. remember when you when people are on Shark Tank, they they see Amazon as a channel, right? Yeah. So they're not designing that product for the channel. they design in the product to solve a specific product uh, problem. Yeah. Now, if that product is unique, when you go onto Amazon and search for the product, yeah. you're not going to find it and you don't know it exists unless mm-hmm. they've had external marketing that has reached the consciousness and it's hit five or six touch points with yourself because that's what most people need five or six touch points. Yeah. In order to get invigorated by something, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. if you think of what is Amazon? Amazon is a supply and demand platform. Yeah? yeah. The higher the demand, the more differentiated you need to be, the more bucks you need to play with, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So people go into the niche. Exactly. Stuff, right. Mm-hmm. So it's keyword driven. Okay? Mm-hmm. But if mm-hmm. you build a unique product and you go and search for it on Amazon, but it doesn't have any keywords for it, then it can be mm-hmm. as unique as you want. It's got no bottom end for no it demand. in terms of there's no demand right mm-hmm, so yeah. you think great well it's shark tank which is obviously they've got national tv mass exposure and everything else mm-hmm. that doesn't guarantee that it will convert for amazon let me give an example if some goes on shark tank depending on how advanced the filming's taken place who's to say mm-hmm. the product is ready on amazon they may be ready elsewhere but we live in our own ecosystem so the the world is amazon to us but for a mm-hmm. lot of people it's a channel. So if I go and speak at say Brighton SEO, I get stuck upstairs in 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 a little room upstairs for 150 people that are interested in Amazon. Mhm. I guess then he got cut out. Mhm. Okay. Okay. Let me check. I guess Danny is Danny got disconnected and he'll be joining any minute again. Okay guys so I guess due to some network problems then he got disconnected and he will be joining any minute so in the meantime if you guys have any questions related to the pro- related to the topic you can drop it in the comment section I'll be more than happy to discuss it and let's not forget that there are a couple of rewards in the in the podcast for all those people who will be dropping some highly informative questions they can get a chance to win them <coughs> Again, yeah, no sorry problem. about that. If we can explain to the audience, I'm having my internet ripped out on Monday. I've had nothing but problems, but we want to see if we can get through it. Um, yeah, yeah, where were no we problem. up to? Apologies uh, to the audience as well. Yeah, we, we were talking about the demand and how people are uplo- launching products without knowing the demand on the Amazon platform, and they are considering it as a channel only instead of considering that it as a separately marketplace. Yeah. So, what do we normally do as Amazon sellers generally? 
we mm -hmm. will do in-depth research on Amazon to find mm -hmm. the demand or find the niche where you feel that you can compete. So mm -hmm. what we're doing is we're talking about two different things here. We're talking about developing a unique product that you okay. hope the world will like on a big platform like Shark Tank. Mm -hmm. Will it solve enough problems for people to connect with the audience to go and search on Amazon? Will the stock okay. be readily available on Amazon? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the stuff, the good side, let's say you have a good connection, right? It connects with the consciousness mm -hmm. out there and it connects with Amazon sellers. Branded search terms, ranking is going to be a lot easier. Cost for PPC, conversion rates, click-through rates are much better because it's more dialed in. So it's, mm -hmm. very, you, it's very hit and miss, yeah, whether it's going to work. Yeah. But it may work on another platform. And if you think about what these guys are buy, buying into on a global level, it's mm -hmm. different from me and you and the person down the road in developing a unique product because they've got the TV behind them. They've got these big heavyweight entrepreneurs that people respect and see on the TV screens each week. So it's a mm -hmm. different ballpark okay. for us. But e equally, they're thinking bigger on Amazon because they'll see Amazon as a channel and a marketplace. They're thinking mm -hmm. in stores. So whilst it might look be frustrating for you that it didn't connect on Amazon, they might keep on Shopify or they may have deals in place for mm -hmm. the... Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. All right, I guess it's cutting out again and again. How to launch, okay. Mm -hmm. Let's just wait for it. All right, guys, I guess the problem is sorry, getting out of hand. Sorry, what I'm done, I've just switched to the phone, so I'm tethering, okay? so I'm Yeah, I guess phone is better, no problem. So the, so the quality, can... we just shut this down here. Yeah, yeah so the sure. Point I was, the, can everyone hear me clearly okay, yeah? Everything is clear, yeah. Okay, so the point I was trying to make is that what the way that we, the perspective that we look at it is quite different to a global brand, multi-million dollar mm -hmm. enterprises that are going to back these kind of products coming in from the heavyweights of entrepreneurs with amazing mm -hmm. black books that gets to open up many doors that we can possibly touch. But All then, right. so that's why there is always going to be two sides of it. But you, we must admit, remember the middle ground for that is what we're looking to do is we're looking to solve a problem, but we also mm -hmm. want to know that the keyword volume is there on Amazon, mm. can we compete and do we have enough money to do it? So yes, you right. want to go for that unique product aspect, but not so unique that there is more unique in terms of product differentiation, more so than mm -hmm. unique that no one's ever heard of it and it becomes a brand new thing, right? Because mm -hmm. that yeah. is where you're going to need heavyweight TV, etc., so that people go to Amazon to search and find it on there. And that has to be consistent over time, right? Mm -hmm. Because after a show like that, it's about, imagine when you run a TV ad, right? You get that mm -hmm. big rush. Or when you work with an influence, influencer, you're going to get a big yeah. rush of sales and then it dries up, yeah. right? It's hit their yep. audience, yep. it's hit the point of saturation, and then you have to die off mm -hmm. period. And so yep. what happens, exactly. you, it's like bust and boom cycles. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's problematic to do that kind of stuff, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, so I think the middle ground for an Amazon seller is you want to mm -hmm. point the differentiation. Now, I tell you the best product to sell on Amazon, not the product itself. But can you imagine, right, if you think Amazon, on average, is 11% mm -hmm. cheaper than any other marketplace platform. Amazon is okay. known for cheaper products. If you look at the shareholder meeting notes each year, you'll see mm -hmm. that in there. People in their mind think, oh, I'll go to Amazon because that's the cheapest. That's the way yeah. they read it. And, of course, because they own probably the most lucrative um, clientele on the planet outside of Apple and a few others in their prime mm -hmm. members. That's the yeah. golden goose that everyone wants, 
right? Yep. So people go yep. there, it's convenience, the, 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 the quick shipping, the quick turnaround, the fact that you can return. So they bring down the barriers to entry of safety in terms of putting mm -hmm. card details. They're already stored. So there's a lot of upside on that bit. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, 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 uh, so let me just add one point here. So when it comes to the pricing point, so yeah. I literally uh, outreach some of the Shark Tank like nominees who received some funding from some one of the sharks, and yeah. I was I was doing some audit for them, and the main problem was with the majority of them, which is common, that they had pricing problems. Yeah. There there were some Chinese sellers who are other sellers who were selling the product at like maybe half the price and yeah. they couldn't drop their price because they had that same higher price on their Shopify stores, same high, higher price on their other platforms as well. So they, are, they have constraints that are stopping them from following the, the Amazon dynamics because yeah. we, we hate to admit this, but Amazon is like pricing that dependent at every point. So if, if you are like, yeah. So if you are selling like for at a ten dollar higher price or twenty dollar higher price, people would think a lot. Even though if you have written as seen on Shark Tank on your title, still people would think a lot before buying if they can buy that same product at like fifty percent off. Yeah, and you know what? The ideal product to sell on Amazon, which is almost impossible, especially in the current climate, mm -hmm. is not a premium price product. I've I've kind of got a lot of data on that, which maybe we'll do a show in the future, and I'll show you the data because my data mm -hmm. science team worked on it and I presented this at Seller Sessions earlier on in the year. Premium mm -hmm. price product and mm -hmm. expecting top three placements is a misnomer. Normally, the premium price products come from your perception. You've got to remember 75% mm -hmm. of affluent people that have money, right, mm -hmm. will still mm -hmm. price compare. They will look at outside of Amazon because everyone thinks, mm -hmm. well, you've got money, they'll buy it, therefore I can do a premium price product. But the reason they've got money is because they're mm -hmm. sensible, right? Yeah. It's the rest of the population that doesn't have financial literacy will do emotion, mm -hmm. more emotional buys without the check, right? Mm -hmm. So okay. if you do a premium price product, but expecting positions one, two, and three, it's near enough, it never connects, mm -hmm. near enough. There's always exceptions to, to the rule, but generally yeah. it doesn't work, and this is what frustrates sellers. They go, well, I've got a premium product, premium price, but mm -hmm. the problem that you got is once you start lifting above the average price of the page, generally, mm -hmm. what happens is you end up further back in the search. Now, if you're happy with positions five, six, seven, and eight, and you're okay. doing a premium price product, and you make it work, accept that. That's fantastic. But what we do, mm -hmm. we want everything, right? We want yeah. and we want to eat it all. But unfortunately, when people turn around and go, yeah, you should do a premium price product, you're not Apple, you're not Yeezy, you're not Adidas, mm -hmm. you're not... Yeah. Um, Nike, do you know what I mean? You don't have the social currency to compete with that on many occasions. So we see a lot of sellers losing money. And, and generally what happens if you launch a product, you don't have mm -hmm. the, the economy to start scale, so you pay a higher unit price, right? So yeah. what happens, you might spend nine months researching the product. You're exhausted at the end of it and go, do you know what? My landing costs are going to be a lot higher so therefore, this becomes a premium product when it's not premium, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, that, that's the, the main problem. The product you can sell on Amazon isn't a premium product. It's the best product at the cheapest price because you'll kill it. Exactly. But it's almost impossible to do. Almost impossible. That's the mm -hmm. ideal product because everyone thinks of premium price. Therefore, mm -hmm. we, you know, we should value it more, and therefore, I'll pay a bit more. I get that. Right, mm -hmm. you understand mm -hmm. that, but their yeah. actions and behaviours don't always match that. So yeah. we have to be very careful with that. And nine times out of ten, if I'm speaking at a conference, or someone reach out to me says, "Damn, my listing's not converting," I go, "All right, open your app, punch in your your keyword, your main keyword. Boom. Mm -hmm. You look at it. Your product is, you know, five dollars higher than everyone else's. Yeah. What What do you have? Well, you know, this has got this, and I've stuck a not an ebook, but you know, I've had these, and I just say, unfortunately, you care, but the pus the customer didn't, because the way that the yeah. customer shows you love is buying it, and your conversion mm -hmm. rate. Yeah. Right? Beyond that, that's an emotional attachment we have with the products, unfortunately. 
So with that in mind, I'm always trying to, I know it sounds oh, like, he's, you know, he's not saying take me to the top, baby, and do all this. I don't yeah. want to bullshit sellers. Like, I want to, I've always said to people, you just mm -hmm. like live in an objective reality. Amazon is tough now, right? Mm -hmm. This yeah, is exactly. a playground anymore. This isn't mm -hmm. a four hour work week. This is real businesses with real money taking real risks at real high cost to do so. To yeah. And so when you count in the with, the with the situation with the war going on, the material cost becomes scarce. That means their prices rise. We've had yeah. logistics in the toilets and we're seeing the way those costs have gone up. So one of the biggest things is, is having financial literacy now and really ironing out every part of it and think about what you are selling. You know, like, mm -hmm. what do, I'm going to do a show on this and I'm going to do a round table. I'll give you an example. What does the average, we're heading into a recession. What does the average okay. human need? They need water. They need yeah. air. They need clothing. They need food. They need okay, shelter. Yeah. So imagine if you work back off of those statistics there and you branch out. What relates to air? What relates to water? And start to think about products that are actually products that people have a real genuine need for. Because I think we're going to find a time where mm -hmm. we know a lot of people talk about China and the price is lower and they've got the bankroll to keep rolling and, and go against what you're doing, right? You've yeah. also got the aggregators with deep pockets so they can own top of search. So we have to mm -hmm. be a bit more clever now about what we do. And it comes back mm -hmm. to you, how do you differentiate the product, but you're giving the value for money, not premium price products? Yeah. Is it hard? Of course it is, because it's got harder and harder all the time. You know, I know yeah, it's I, ideal I, wants to flop. Yeah, I, I, should, I, should, I should mention this point that the aggregators, they are like purchasing in, for like inventory of one year, two years. And so, if 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 you if the recession is uh, are there is any problem with the shipments or anything, they are not being affected. Only yeah. those are being affected who are purchasing their inventory after every three or two months. Yeah. So, if there is an increase in the shipment, an increase in the product, they they can easily manipulate the pricing as 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 long as they want, because you would be the yeah. one with all the all the setbacks. Yeah. So, it, you know, it comes back down to. We have to, as sellers, we're nimble and we can be a bit more crafty and creative because once the big companies are sitting around tables, the wheels turn slower. The advantage that we have is nimbleness, the quick of movement, mm -hmm. right? The mm -hmm. problem that we don't have as a lot of sellers is cash is always scarce, right? No matter how yeah. big the seller is, right? Mm -hmm. There's always a bump in the road where we need more cash, we need more lead term, we need to turn keys of infantry. We need to order more stock mm -hmm. to bring the price. So it always comes back to cash. If that's yeah. managed well and you've got a great product and you think about what does PPC do? It creates visibility. That's mm -hmm. all that PPC does. We can get really technical with it. I mean, I've got an agency. We've been building technology for four years. My, my partner, Dr. Ellis Whitehead, is one of the smartest people in the game, right? We're okay. years ahead mm -hmm. of a lot of agencies, but we can't change someone's product, their brand name, their pu you know, we can't change all that. We have to be realistic. And the thing is, whilst we've got an opportunity to be super dialed in, so when you're working with a seven, eight figure sellers, we can mm -hmm. save them a lot in terms of cash, but in smaller percentages. Do you see what I mean? It's where the smaller percentages is where you start to win as you scale up and get mm -hmm. larger. Mm -hmm. okay. but, the, but effectively, all PPC is, is an amplifier. All it does is give you some visibility. You pay for PPC, it goes at the top if you top a search or in and around the area, then it's down to mm -hmm. the customer. If they click on it and don't buy it, your conversion rate is going to go down, right? So you need to be I, super dialed like in rank the conversion rate, yeah? Because conversion, mm -hmm. it, and, and often you find is that... Um, you can have the best product in the world also, but if you're in a super competitive niche and you don't have any conversion history, it's hard to compete in mm -hmm. the ad algorithm, the ad placement algorithm, right? Because mm -hmm. you've got no conversion history. And if you try and rank products that don't connect, maybe they're too pricey, but you're spent, you're raised your price to bring you top of search because top of search is expensive. Yeah. Then when you put your price up, the conversion rate goes down 
and it gives you a negative impact on your organic rank as well. So there's yeah. a massive sort of fact that we have to manage across the board as sellers, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I guess we should move forward to the case study you have. Uh, I have a question regarding that. Uh, you said you have a data, data scientist working for you. So yeah. when you showed me all that stats, I was going to ask you this question that do you have any background with the computer science field? Because I studied this same thing in compiler construction, where are we, where we are utilizing each and every factor as one or two and adding it yeah. to give, give each figure each importance. So I guess we should move forward to it. Yeah, I mean, I haven't, I can't do the slides now because I switched to the phone. The, what I showed you earlier on was the relevance, but we can do another show in the future and I'll give you a breakdown of all the statistics and data, right? Mm -hmm. across, okay. I think it's something like a thousand keywords, PQ4, so there's no seasonality. We break down, mm -hmm. we break down prices, we break down PPC. So I'll do that in okay. another show. But I wanted, what I'd like to talk about is relevance mm -hmm. and all the work that I do with A9 because I use the science literature and the videos okay. and data from A9 to, mm -hmm. to work with because a lot of people use their own theory. They test mm -hmm. something and they go, well, it ranks like this, it does like that. And, and quite often because theory and how you see it works doesn't mean how A9 works technically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, exactly. So what I wanted to, to go through here and to see if it can work on the screens, otherwise we would have, uh, I'll, I'll talk through the process, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what Amazon has running in the background is they're cataloging a product type, right? So yes. I'll read you a, a direct quote from the A19. We treat each query as a noun phrase and consider the head of the noun phrase to be the core product type and all other words in the query to be modifiers. So it goes back okay. to the relevance, right? So you've got the core product type, okay? So let's mm -hmm. say in this case, let's use an example, growth beard oil, right? That's a search term, okay. right? Okay. But there's not necessarily a, a subcategory on Amazon for growth beard oil, right? Yeah. But there is a beard mm -hmm. oil. And for growth, basically, when they say run a match against the product types that run in the background for growth, right? Which mm -hmm, changes mm -hmm. consistency. What you probably find more likely is that beard oil and oil as an example of possible matches. So what happens mm -hmm. is the word growth actually becomes the modifier. Beard okay, is yeah. a product mm -hmm. type, and then oil is a product type, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you imagine you have a, a relevancy system, right? So you have five points. You score your keywords based on relevance. Bear in mind what okay. I put for my nine. So if we use mm -hmm. plug-in air freshener, so the lowest score is going to be one, the highest score is five. So if one okay. is relevant, would mm -hmm. be carpet freshener and car air mm -hmm. freshener. Because this is a mm -hmm. this is a plug-in air freshener, right? Then two, mm -hmm. indirectly or broad, broadly related, which is air mm -hmm. freshener or air freshener spray. Now, air freshener spray, plugins can spray. Air freshener mm -hmm. doesn't have to be a plug-in either. Therefore, it's indirectly or broadly related. Yeah. But then you think of scoring number three is the general niche, right? So you've got plug-in mm -hmm. air freshener is the general niche. Then after that, if you want to get more specific on these modifiers. So uh, more specific than the general niche would be a related products that are different from yours. So one good specific term, right? So plug okay. in air freshener with refills, okay? Submission uh, into the exact intent, what people actually want to buy. Yeah, what you're doing is you're matching a relevance engine with a product type and the modifiers. So if, okay. if A9 says we're running product types in the, in the background, there's core mm -hmm. product types, then you have a mm -hmm. modifier, which is the other essence or other words within inside that search phrase. The okay. more relevant they are, the more relevant it's going to be in terms of your PPC and ranking, etc. Obviously, you need conversions, of course. Mm -hmm. But people start often start with, they might start advertising on air freshener when actually it's a plug-in air freshener. Costs them more money, conversion rates are generally lower across the board, right? Because mm -hmm. when we search air freshener versus plug-in air freshener, there's probably going to be, if I look now, loads of spray air fresheners. But someone wants a yeah. plug-in air freshener. Do you understand? 
But people yeah, want to exactly. go after that because the search volume's high. So if you want to be more specific to the product, an example would be the brand name. So Airwick plug-in air freshener with refills, right? Mm-hmm, so you mm-hmm. can hear these, there's a point there of specifiers. Mm-hmm. So brand name is unique in most cases, right? So you've got plug-in mm-hmm. air freshener, which is general niche, and then you've got plug-in air freshener with refills, which is more specific. And then if you add the brand name to the general niche, plug-in air freshener, that's going to give mm-hmm. you five. So let's remind you what I've just said again. We treat each query as a noun phrase and consider the head of the noun phrase to be the okay. core product type and all the other words in the query to be modifiers, right? All right. So let's mm-hmm. break it down mm-hmm. again. Carpet air freshener is irrelevant and it gets a score of one. Air freshener okay. is the broad niche, which gets a score of two. And plug-in yeah. freshener is the general niche, which gets a score of three, right? Yeah. Then mm-hmm. we look at the modifiers. Now, what would the modifiers be here where you add them on? Well, Airwick, as the brand name is reused, will give you a plus two. Yeah. It's the uniqueness, right? Then yeah, refill exactly. plus one, electric plus one, home plus one, lavender plus one, for instance. No, no now, five. if you look at queries again and break them down, because I like to reinforce this, because some people go, oh, I'm not sure about this, and we'll talk about that after. So mm-hmm. carpet air freshener, the core product type will give you a total one, because it's irrelevant. Airwick mm-hmm. plug-in air freshener is free plus two because plug-in air freshener is the general niche and Airwick is the brand name, gives you a score of two. That's a total of five, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Air freshener with refill, okay? So air freshener, okay? You're going to mm-hmm. look at that. You've got a core of two plus one for the properties, a total of three of your scoring. Plug-in mm-hmm. air freshener with refill, three, which is the general niche because of plug-in air freshener, and refill gets one, gives you a total of a relevant score of four. And then plug-in air freshener with refill for home, core product type is the plug-in air, uh, plug-in air freshener. Refill is one, home is one, gives you a total of five. Now, yeah. why is that useful? Well, A9 works in terms of contextual and behavioral matching, right? Scoring mm-hmm. the relevance of your search terms helps you predict the behavior of PPC mm-hmm. organic rank- ranking. Predict, not mm-hmm. determine. There's different. Mm-hmm. So higher relevance generally means higher conversion rate. So mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. a higher conversion rate keyword is more than likely to be successful, improve organic ranking than the lower mm-hmm. conversion rate keywords relative to that category, right? Mm-hmm. So it needs to be taken into consideration with, along with the popularity of the keywords as measured mm-hmm. in brand analytics report or search volume. So okay. if we need to break that down, if you're sitting at home with a, a pen and paper, some of this mm-hmm. stuff you might think, oh, it's tough to understand. But if yeah. you play back this video and write down what I've just said, you can then go and look at your product and go, what am I selling? Okay, I'm selling mm-hmm. it. What are my keywords? And you might have hundreds of keywords in your account, wasting your time, wasting bucks and everything else. What mm-hmm. you want to do is we move away from the vanity of sheer search volume And we move Mm -hmm. back to the pinpoint of absolute relevancy. Now, when you have a scoring system, it's going to work Mm -hmm. slightly differently for people. Why is that? Mm -hmm. Well, because if you know in-depth knowledge about that niche, you're going to be better tied in with that scoring system versus Mm -hmm. right? So it's not absolute perfect every time. But if you imagine that the amount of products are found on Amazon, Nine times out of ten, it comes down to keywords outside of the product itself. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You're focusing on the wrong keywords. And what you're looking to do, if if A9 works this way, why wouldn't you? So going back to the point, A9 runs in the background. It has a product type. And then Mm -hmm. the other parts are the modifiers. So when I was talking to you about earlier on, Airwick, plug-in air freshener. That's going yes. to give you a total of five. Why? Because plug-in air freshener is the general niche, but because you've had the modifiers on top, like Airwick, that gives you a two because of uniqueness. So that would be number five because that's going to be super relevant. If a customer goes yeah. Airwick, plug-in air freshener, they're almost certainly going to buy it because they've searched for the brand name and know exactly the type of air freshener that they want. Yeah, I, I guess I guess uh, majority of the sellers actually know this fact and they uh, literally admit to this fact that relevancy is the key. But still, their nerves 
don't let them stick to the relevancy part. They just want to try. Excuse my yeah. friend, fuck them with, with the head, right? Because it says, yeah. oh, look, 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 search volume. Oh, I'm going to do more units here. And generally it goes yeah. down rather than up. But we, mm -hmm. we filter by search volume. And then mm -hmm, generally yeah. what happens, we go after these keywords that are not mm -hmm. relevant enough. Or mm -hmm. you go back and check all your keywords, right? Because mm -hmm. here's another thing that people do. They use a third party tool. All right. Yeah. They'll find loads of keywords, but they don't wash them against the brand analytics report. Yeah. If, if so the data is actually it, available so, or not. Yeah. So you could have loads of search terms that you think, great, this product's got loads of terms. Mm -hmm. Compare that to the brand analytics report, but only five of them out in there out of 20. And yeah. if the, and it's, it's not been updated recently, but Ellison and the, and the data team at another company, I won't say where, Look to the brand analytic report. This is two years ago, so things can change. They worked mm -hmm. out on, on .com, if the keyword does not appear in the brand mm -hmm. analytics report, almost mm -hmm. certainly, but there's exceptions to the rule, that's going mm -hmm. to have 10 or less searches per day. So it's only 300 searches a month. Okay. Okay. And you're not yeah. going to build a business of 300 searches because you've got to get to the conversion rate, which is going to be mm -hmm. next to nothing in comparison okay. to the volume that you need to succeed mm -hmm. right to run a business yeah. so that's another fatal mistake that sellers do is they don't wash the keyword it takes five minutes brand analytics all the third party mm -hmm. tools check them are they in the brand analytics report mm -hmm. no or if they start to filter down they may decide i don't have 20 keywords to go after i've only got five do i want to take this risk and maybe lay out 15 30 mm -hmm. 45 60k on a product that's going to be super high risk. So it's like some preventions rather than the cure. Very helpful, super helpful. Everything is fully packed up. It's going to be a little bit tough for the audience, but maybe you can share that uh, slide share with me after this uh, podcast and I can share with the community yeah. so they can get a better idea of what we are actually talking about and how all these modifiers actually work. So okay. let's just move forward to some of the comments which we have. Yeah. And the first question is, is the risk of developing and launching a newly concept product worth a shot? What's your opinion? I would say it comes down to budget. Let's just say you are a product developer. You've got someone on your team who has mm -hmm. supreme background in it and you've got deep products. Then, yeah, uh, deep uh, pockets, sorry. It's worth the risk. But if you're like me and you, we came to Amazon for a reason and we've had to learn mm -hmm. a load of different skill sets, right? So yeah. When you come to Amazon, you get attracted by something. Mine was PPC because everything I've built is based on PPC. Hence why now I probably own an agency. It wasn't that intent in the beginning. I started mm -hmm. on Amazon when I realized when they launched PPC, it was like Toy Town back then, right? It's just sponsored okay. product. But there's a video mm -hmm. on YouTube where I showed the correlation between running PPC and converting and organic rank in November 2015. So it's seven years old now. I was okay. when, to do it. When people were using give giveaways. What's that, sorry? <laughs> when people were using giveaways and all those shady strategies to rank products, yeah. you were doing Back PPC then, at that time as well. Yeah. Blast you right. you, you yeah, blast cool. your one. But the point I was going to get to without going off too much off track, we get attracted mm -hmm. to go to Amazon for a reason. We normally have mm -hmm. one specific set of skills that brings us there but shit at mm -hmm. everything else right so when i went to amazon it was only ppc then i had to learn seller central then i had to learn mm -hmm. to research products then i had to learn to source products then i had to learn to ship products right mm -hmm. so you learn all mm -hmm. these new skills but that's what brings you there so if you're on amazon and you're coming for the first time for instance it's probably not advisable to try and build a unique product that you've never built before if you've got no background or if you've not got the money. Your mm -hmm. best bet is to find a niche on Amazon, right, that is mm -hmm. not hyper-competitive where you can compete or make a placement bet on niches expanding in the future, right, and take mm -hmm. a bit of a punt there at a lower, at lower cost. But okay. of course mm -hmm. you want to differentiate products. But it's, it's not easy. That's hard. It's hard. Yeah. And it's healed. Too much work. Not for somebody who's like, who's earning, earning his bread butter from Amazon. It's like if you have a lot of, couple of million dollars in your pocket and you can easily depend on them, then it's, it's worth a shot. Otherwise, I guess it's not that much yeah. of, an, of an option. 
Yeah. Okay. Let's move over to the second one. So we have seen some of the products being launched with no real history, but their demand and sales explode. Is there any way to predict upcoming in-demand products? Well, you, not necessarily on Amazon, but you can do uh, Google Trends and you can see if mm -hmm. things are, are, are going on an upwards motion, but not mm -hmm. necessarily on Amazon itself with, with enough predictable data. Mm -hmm. I, I guess MEV uh, did launch a product a couple of years back. I guess it was a hook for the kitchen. I guess yeah. she was the one who, who launched a product and it, it went really, really well. Yeah, I guess but you got the exceptions right? and then there's the rule, right? So mm -hmm. one of the common things you'll find with Amazon sellers, like I've seen thousands of accounts since 2015, and mm -hmm. there's almost in every single account an 80-20 rule, right? So you've mm -hmm. got your your top SKUs do 80% of the revenue. Yeah. It's like 80-20. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got your hitters, and then you've got okay ones, and you've got your auto rams. That's the same. For, if you've got 10 products... 100 products, 1,000 products, almost each time, that's mm -hmm. going to find is there's an 80-20 rule in most cases, right? Yeah. Um, cool. There was another point I was going to make on that. Ah, the other thing is we did a show this a couple of years ago. I brought a load of engineers on. It's the variables mm -hmm. of the luck of the Amazon seller. So give me an example. You could be an Amazon seller that was very successful in a niche. You start a mm -hmm. second brand, you go into a new niche, and do every right, but it doesn't connect because you've missed the timing. Yeah. Um, things change quickly. And of course, there's no guarantees. So a lot of people that with success on Amazon need a bit of luck as well, right? Because you've seen very mm. successful people. I mean, even down to Kevin King, very successful man, a good friend of mine, brilliant yeah. mind, right? Mm -hmm, but he, mm -hmm. he done a podcast. He lost a million. So it can Ooh. happen. Do you, know, do you know what I mean? So he lost mm -hmm. a million on, on a product. Uh, mm -hmm. He was very public about it, so and took his learnings from it. But even the very best equipped people, you can have all the resources in the world, right? Yeah, it doesn't guarantee a win. So there is exactly. a bit of element. You need a bit. Of, you need to ride your luck. You need a good product. Mm -hmm. right? You need a good price point. It's mm -hmm. not easy. Um, it's very much doable. But one of the biggest things is. The key things I've noticed with the most successful sellers, like the eight-figure sellers, a, a good example would be someone like Brandon Young, right? Okay, yeah, now, okay. Now, he doesn't have an emotional attachment to his products, and he treats mm -hmm. his products like a stock portfolio. He hasn't got okay. it up until now, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. He stays, from my understanding, in the toy category. And he just goes mm -hmm. in and he launches loads of products, and the ones that fail, he gets them out of the business as quickly as possible, and replaces them. So okay. it doesn't get an emotional attachment. He's found ways of, of dumping, pro of launching products. If they don't work, get rid of them. Everyone has faith. Be risking. Be risking a lot. Yeah. Mm, cool, cool. Smart, smart move. Okay. So another question is how to launch superior products, quality products, but price three or four X market price. I guess that's not going to happen. What do you no, think? I mean, statistically, the world's against you unless you're Apple, right? And even they're not yeah. three or four times higher than, say, Microsoft, their products. There mm -hmm. may be 40 to 60% higher in a lot of cases, mm -hmm. not necessarily okay. four times, you know? Okay. So the second question, another question is, how can we run modify a campaign? Should we add plus sign with our super relevant keywords? Oh, what are we talking about here? We're just talking about modifiers on, on keywords in PPC, or are we talking about A9's modifiers? I guess he's referring to the PPC modifiers. Do you know what? That's not a good question for me right now because I'm not personally, my work mm -hmm. at Data Brill as a founder is mm -hmm. I don't work on PPC. I work on all the A9 stuff and the correlation between the ranking and ranking okay. So mm -hmm. I don't have a really good answer for that, in all honesty. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. No problem, no problem. Okay, so the last one is, what other options do we have when we do not have keyword opportunity in the market? How do we land and launch in the market? You have to work to the keyword opp opportunities because it's supply and demand, yeah? So mm -hmm. people go on Amazon, they turn, because they, it's search's intent, right? This isn't a banner advertisement. 
right? Mm -hmm. So with banner advertisement, obviously you're getting exposure. That's more invasive advertising going, hey, mm -hmm. do you like this? Hey, do you like this? Whereas when you go onto Amazon, it's searcher's intent. That person goes, I will want to buy this product with this keyword sent. Mm -hmm. Bang, mm -hmm. returns results. Gets yeah. So you always have to work backwards from the keywords. And then obviously it trickles down the competition, the differentiation, mm -hmm. the price point, et cetera, et cetera. What can you do to be better in the market? All right. All right. Cool. Cool. So I guess this is it. This is all we have. Do, we, do you have anything else to share with the community? Um, no, just good luck with everything. Um, mm -hmm. Amazon is a tough game, but it's, the, it's survival of the fittest, right? We have to be realistic, right? That's not to put yeah. people off. The, what mm -hmm. we've noticed is that the influx of people coming into Amazon is shrunk. Why? Because, mm -hmm. the, the, you know, 2015, even back then, $500 was pretty low to start. But back then, mm -hmm. you could just put a badge on the product. It would sell. It was a bit easier to rank. You could get access to reviews a lot easier. It's far mm -hmm. more sophisticated now. And generally, the yeah. ones that win on Amazon are dogged. They get up every day, and they deal with all the bullshit that comes with it and stay yeah. in the game. Generally, they're the mm -hmm. ones that win if they're obviously mm -hmm. smart about, you know, the products do connect and stuff. But it, it, mm -hmm. it takes all your tenacity. It's just that's realistic. But that goes the same yeah. for most things in life that are worthwhile are hard mm -hmm. to come by, you know? All right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I guess this is it. Thank you so much, Danny, for the, giving us your time and, your, and sharing all that knowledge. Hopefully in the future, we will be scheduling another podcast so you can share your screen and all that stuff with the community yeah. so they can absorb more knowledge. So this is it. Thank you so much for having me and giving us the time. You're more than welcome. Thank you, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.